I spent um, a couple of very happy years working in Khalifi and setting up the trial facility. And in fact, much of what we've done with the Global Health Network built on exactly what's going on in Khalifi. And the ideas that Sam explained to you about um, trying to, to, to share across different disciplines and different disease areas. And effectively, everything you're going to hear now is just an online version of what's happening in Khalifi. I think that's a fair description, isn't it, Sam? So thank you for the introduction. There's a bit of feedback on these mics. Um, so, um, those of you in the audience who work on any form of clinical research study should um, appreciate this um, very well, that anything you do um, when you run a study isn't actually that different. And I often challenge, especially when I do training courses um, with a mixed audience, I challenge people to tell me only one thing they do in their clinical study or clinical trial that is unique to their study. And there's usually a few hands up, and it's usually things like, oh, sort of lab assay is really special and nobody else has to solve a problem like we do. And then you dig down a bit and the problem was about um, labelling or QA or transportation and it's completely, um, you know, it could be completely replicated. So you, really what I'm saying is that so much of what the things that we find difficult when we're trying to run studies well are, are shared and it doesn't matter what disease we're working in, it doesn't matter whether you're working in a shiny hospital in, um, in London or in some of the difficult settings that we work in in sub-Saharan Africa. We face very similar challenges. And simply what we're trying to do is suggest that if we've got better as scientists at sharing what we do um, and sharing our methods, that we could speed up a lot of the research um, challenges that we have before us that you've heard all about today. And if, you, if we as scientists got better at sharing the how-to, there was a nice clip on Natalie's slide, I think, about doing the how-to, um, that we would we'd be able to standardise what we do and then we could share the data later. Um, we'd share best practices rather than continually reinventing the wheel. And um, you know, it, it would be immediately bring this um, collaboration and networking that we've been talking about. So this is really about how to put this into practice. And a few people have used the phrase community of practice um, today and that's entirely what I'm, I'm talking about here. So community of practice, there's a nice um, uh, academic... Um, label and a whole school of thought about this that was really coined in Harvard. And a community of practice is a group of practitioners that share the same issue. So we're all trying to improve research in low income settings and particularly in neglected tropical diseases. You get those people to work together to solve the problem. And it's um, in this case we want to apply it to speeding up research um, in neglected tropical diseases. So a few years ago we brought some of these ideas together and as I say it's really started from setting up um, an area for clinical trials, which we, we pretty much made an online version of the clinical trial facility we had um, we had set up in Khalifi. Um, that went really well. It just was phenomenal. It took off very quickly. And so several groups, including Jeremy, who was here this morning, came together and said, I'd like one of those too. So we just replicated it, linked them all together, and thought, we're stuck on something here. And it's effectively a science park for, um, for research. And all it is, is, is a space online to to do your work, to talk to each other, to find collaborators. But it, we've, we're just trying to apply the best digital technology that we can find. So you know when you go on Amazon or on your online shopping and it says, you bought this book, surely you'd like this one. You're like, damn, I do, and you buy it. It's, it's that, you know, it, it's been, you know, everybody uses Facebook and LinkedIn and everything else, but we've not, never really harnessed this technology for speeding up research. So that's simply what we're trying to do. And I am no digital expert at all, and I think that helps. <laughs> and we employ very smart um, um, youngsters who do the clever stuff. But um, we're just simply trying to apply that um, cutting-edge digital technology um, and make it work to support sharing the how-to in research. So um, that's, that's essentially what we're doing with the Global Health Network. So this has been built up over the last few years. We're largely funded by the Gates Foundation. Um, and now it's quite a sophisticated platform. And we've, if you think of it like a science park, we've got um, offices, digital offices, where you can go in and work on um, influenza or malaria or tuberculosis or dengue, um, whatever it is. Um, and you can, you can go into that office and you can just share protocols, develop SOPs, discuss what the um, endpoints you should all be measuring, very important, you should all measure the same endpoints. Um, and then you can step out from your, your specialist office and you can access the cross-cutting things like microbiology, diagnostics, uh, re regulations, ethics applications, how to write a consent form, um, data management is a massive area we're getting into and data sharing which we talked about earlier um, and then we've got quite a few research tools that I'll come back to in a minute. So 
there's there's over 20 of these independent offices on the science park now looking at all sorts of different particular things um, and we've, we've just set up one for neglected tropical diseases which we're working on with um, WHO TDR have led this space um, so go on and have a look and you can have a look at all the different ones um, and this is the one we've just launched for neglected tropical diseases and it's being coordinated by Astrid who's sitting over here um, this is led by Piero Oliaro at um, WHO TDR um, but you'll notice that there's no logos on this platform anywhere. You know, this isn't about any particular organisational group. It's, it's, um, the, the reason we think this is working very well is that it's, it's an absolutely neutral and democratic space where people can come together, they can set up their own groups, you can set up your own workspaces, you can have them open or closed, you can write a protocol, you can write a funding application. It's, it, it's basically a space that's there for using as you need to use it. Um, and the, the, but if you think of it, the science park analogy, you can set up your own office, you can call in a team of people, get some work done, but then you can access everything else as well to get to, that you might need in order to write a good protocol and, and guide your research. So the stuff that's up there now is just supposed to be showing the way and just giving some illustrative examples. Astra's done a lovely job of um, starting some, um, to get some resources up there and start some discussions. But feel free to dive in um, and get involved and, and pick it up and take it and use it as you want to. Um, and we're going to do quite a lot of outreach activity through WHO TDR and anybody else who wants to get involved to, to really let people know about this and, and just make sure that people know it's a space that people working in this area can use as, as they want to. And it's, just, it's a blank sheet. It can be taken, adapted and, and developed as you want. The Gates funding that we've got enables us to build new digital tools. So if there's things you want on there, things you want, you think it could be done differently, um, it can be done, and um, I'll come back to things like e-learning and um, process mapping in a minute. But it's, it's there for the taking, and this is a whole new space just for NTD, so um, please do use it. This is just an example of how it's worked very well in another field. Um, this is um, a group of people who work on influenza, and they've um, developed um, a whole raft of protocols um, that they've um, developed in consensus on here using the, the, um, using the document development tools and then they share them and they're being, um, they're being rolled out all over the world and, and taken up and used and adapted. So they've got a, a standard protocol, it's taken by one group, adapted to their setting, it goes through the local regulatory approval and off it goes and it's been a very fast and efficient way to get standardised research done in influenza. And so um, this is just one of many examples of how it's been used by other disease areas. Um, a new um, an exciting um, tool we've just got in development now, it's going to be launched in the next eight weeks or so, um, it's a process map for researchers to use. Um, this is, it, it sounds quite dull but we think it's quite exciting. Um, the idea of this is it just demonstrates exactly all the steps you need. You know, Natalie ran through all the challenges there are in setting up studies in these places. Um, this is a truly globally applicable process map to any kind of research study and it'll help you um, make sure you've thought of everything you need to, to go through. So many of us who support research and low-income settings work with people who sort of 10 minutes before the study starts say, I haven't got a database, or what about my trial lab? Or, you know, well, there's all these things that are missing. And this process map will make sure everything's been thought about. But much, much more than that, it dynamically points to everything you need to conduct that step. So it will point to all the tools and resources on this platform, but also elsewhere. It will also give you peer support, help you find experts, have discussion forums. So there's, there's going to be an awful lot on there. And um, if you're interested, we can, um, you can learn more, a lot more about that as we um, release it. Um, SiteFinder was another tool developed by, um, in partnership with the Gates Foundation. Um, we really have enjoyed pulling this together. Um, we use dating site technology for this. Uh, and the idea was that, um, you know, there's, there's no um, hospital that just works on TB, right? Or there's no village where you've just got kids with malaria. And if you did a map of where all the study sites were for different diseases, it's ridiculous. It's, it's people who work on TB studies just go back to their TB sites. And, um, and the Gates Foundation did this exercise um, with a group that Natalie and I are involved with, with their product development partnerships. And so um, the challenge was, was um, could, the, the sort of two issues that... Um, let's say, for example, the 10 sites that worked on the malaria vaccine trial we heard about earlier, that's finished now. They've got amazing staff. They've had about seven years' worth of investment. They've got digital X-ray machines, fantastic laboratories. They need some more studies to come in there now and use that amazing capacity that's there. Otherwise, it will just disperse, and what a waste of investment. And equally, there are people planning research studies around the world who are desperate to find these really well-experienced centres 
or centres who've got the disease burden and desperately want to learn. They're, you know, I love working in research naive sites that have never done a study before. They're keen to learn, they want to do well, and th they just need to have um, a voice and to say we're here and we want to work on whatever's out there. So SiteFinder does that. You can list yourself as a research site, and then if you're planning a study, you can list yourself up there too. And the idea is also for people to be able to find collaborators. So maybe somebody's got a fridge full of samples in Ethiopia and they just want to find people with a laboratory capacity to help them analyse those samples. It's there for that as well. So it's working really nicely. It hasn't been up that long, but it's, um, it's basically taking dating site technology and applying that to improve uh, research. Um, we've got over 30 courses up now. Um, I think there's about 12 core courses and then we've got the translations. Um, the aim of our e-learning um, is really straightforward. We take very high quality face-to-face -face training and we adapt it into online learning courses. Um, they go out for peer review and they're short how-to courses. We've had over 10,000 of these courses completed now. It's free, they've all been developed to run on low bandwidth um, settings and they work really, really nicely. And it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple um, system. And for NTDs, we'd love to put a whole set of e-learning courses up on the NTD area. And we've got staff um, within our operational team to help build these. So if anybody's got any good face-to-face -face courses they want or any ideas for, for, for courses for in this area, let us know and we can develop those um, in partnership with you. And everybody who's contributed to the courses are, of course, recognised. Um, and so it's, it's, it's nice dissemination for, to, for the lots of excellent training that's already out there. The other thing we've got is this professional membership scheme. This is another project we did with um, WHO TDR. Our, our philosophy was this, was that um, most people who work on clinical trials in low-income settings just aren't recognised for the job they do. They've come from a nursing background or laboratory staff, data managers, and they're just, you know, all the, all the focus goes on the PI, and these are the people that make trials work and allow the question to be answered. And they need professional recognition, they need career ladders, they need opportunities. And so we've got this nice um, professional membership scheme where people can work their way up through um, five different levels of membership. And it's a really nice way to show how sites have, have grown. We're, we're increasingly going to be working with EBCTP on this because it's a way to measure how you've moved um, research organisations um, through, up through um, developing their in-house capacity. Um, and as I say, it's aimed for all sorts of people, um, including the in investigators, but right through to um, your, your field workers. Um, a new area we've put up quite recently is for to support laboratories. Um, and again, we're going to have a whole set of um, e-learning courses, largely developed from um, the good work that's gone on in Khalifi. Um, we've heard already today about the lack of um, things like um, normal ranges that are applicable for these settings. We're working in partnership with groups like the African Society of Laboratory Medicine and GLADMAP, which was a WHO initiative to try and list um, laboratory capacity around the world. Again, the idea is simply to network the networks and make sure everybody can access information. And again, the process mapping tool will really help um, pinpoint what's available and stop people having to reinvent the wheel with things like quality management standards and so on. So, um, just really to summarise, um, the, it's simply a mechanism for researchers to work together without geographical, institutional, financial barriers. The idea is to help people work across disease areas, across institutions, across regions, we have research nurses in Malawi, for example, talking to research nurses in Nepal and explaining how to set up a community advisory board. That's a community of practice in action. So there's 20 different offices, if you like, in the science park now, and, the, and they're given this um, really high-tech area for them to work in using this cutting-edge technology, um, and they can just get on and do the work they need to do, and their staff and their teams can access all the other resources. We've had over 200,000 visits and 11,000 courses have now been completed. Um, and what keeps people coming back is the extra sort of cross-cutting tools that, that can help them with their work, so the process mapping and the e-learning, for example. It's, re it's really important that we try and make some initiatives like this work because we've heard all day that there's not enough um, research and evidence collection going on in places like this. Research is seen as being expensive and slow, cumbersome and difficult. But you know, the, th the things that people find expensive, slow, cumbersome and difficult are the same ubiquitous challenges that we all face. And as, as scientists, we're rubbish at sharing. We, we just don't do it. It's just not, we haven't been brought up to do that. Um, and, you know, it's, 
there is a massive focus on data sharing, which is fantastic, and it's the way the world's heading. That's that's great. But unless we share the methods by which we collected that data, it's not going to be very much use because we've collected data in different ways. We can't assure the quality. It's taken so long, or, or indeed there isn't even enough data to share. So we need to step back a bit and think about the bit that happens before. So this is, we hope, is a sort of an innovative way to do it because we're trying to use the sort of wiki-type sharing philosophy in the world that's going on. You know, with TripAdvisor, we all go on that now, don't we, to check out restaurants and what have you. It's just trying to apply that in this setting, that we should all just um, talk to each other. And I love that open session earlier because that's exactly what this is all about, and I hope we can work with some of the organisations we heard about earlier. Um, it's also that we're terrible for working in silos and vertical networks, and that um, hopefully we can use digital technology because the trouble is, is information overload, isn't it? There's just so much out there. But that doesn't stop Amazon and Facebook and LinkedIn, does it? So it shouldn't stop us. You can organise information very, in a very clever way, and it's all about how you present it and how you, you, you personalise the views that people get on websites, and we can do that. Um, so it's just a, a very um, functional digital way to just collaborate online, and it, it's, it's the clever stuff behind the scenes, but hopefully given a simple presentation. So just to finish, um, this new area we've set up for NTDs is, is up online now. It's, it's, it's just put up there almost now as a sort of, here it is, what do you want to do with it? And I know Astrid's going to be working very hard trying to follow up with people and, and seeing um, how people would like to use it and what they'd like to do. But please let us know. You know, it's a democratic, neutral space. All we're doing is facilitating it and just putting it out there for you. So it's there for the um, NTD community to use. So, um, so please take up that opportunity and make the most of it. Thank you very much.